Hello, my name is Rusty Belcher and I'm a mechanical application engineer working with Avatex Solutions. Today's tech tip involves using Inventor and Excel along with Vault to copy a design. Inventor and Excel are both powerful design applications. When you combine the two, parametrically speaking, the sky is the limit. Inventor has always been able to work with Excel, but the new Vault copy design practice presents several challenges to the traditional method of linking to a spreadsheet. This video will outline the process of embedding an Excel spreadsheet along with its parameters into a master inventor part or assembly. This master component will be referenced by all the other members of the design. After the design is vaulted, the copy design process will allow us to generate as many different versions of the original design as we like, including the spreadsheet parameters. To update the parameters of the new design, we'll simply change the settings in the new master component. The first step in our process is to create the master component. The master component in this case will have an embedded Excel spreadsheet containing all of the component parameters. The practice of linking an inventor assembly to an external Excel spreadsheet has always presented problems for the copy design process. Embedding the Excel spreadsheet into the master component allows the copy design process to update the spreadsheet parameters along with the other members of the design. Let me show you how to embed an Excel spreadsheet into an inventor part. I'm going to start a new component. And this will be our master component in the assembly. I'm then going to start the parameters command. In the parameters dialog, I'm going to select the link button. Now I want to pause here for a second and show you the Excel spreadsheet we're going to use for this example. Here's my Excel spreadsheet. I'm using regular Excel practices to establish a table. Alongside the table are my inventor parameters. We have the name of the parameter, the parameter value, and the parameter unit. It's also important to take a note of where the parameters start. In this case, we're starting in cell M2. To embed the Excel spreadsheet, we're going to choose the Embed option. And we're going to change our start cell to M2. I'll select Open to embed the parameters from the Excel spreadsheet into the inventor part. When I select Done, if you look in the browser, you'll actually see the third party Excel spreadsheet embedded into your inventor part file. Now I've jumped ahead in the process and I finished modeling my master component. I'm going to zoom into the end here and show you how I used the Excel parameters. I'm going to show the dimensions. Every feature on my master component references some of the parameters from the Excel spreadsheet. The next step in our process happens at the assembly level. I've started a new assembly. The first part that we'll place in the assembly is the master component. Now I'm going to create a secondary component and link it to the master part. I'll start that process by creating a new component. We'll call it end cap in this case. Now I'm not going to use the first sketch, so I'll simply click Return. There are a number of ways to link your new parts to the master component. One of my favorite ways is the new copy object command. This is a nice command that allows us to select bodies or faces and make an associative relationship. I'm going to select face and surface, and I'm going to pick these two surfaces from the master component. I want to make sure that we maintain an associative relationship here, so I'll make sure there's a check mark beside associative. When I select OK, I've got a surface. If the master component ever changes, 
this surface will update to suit. Now I need to link this new part to the original master component. I'm looking for the thickness parameter. To do that, I'm going to activate the parameters button on my part features toolbar. I'm going to select the link option. Now instead of linking to an external spreadsheet, I'm going to change the file type to inventor files. And then I'm going to link directly to the master part. Now this gives us a unique dialog box. Instead of linking to all the parameters, you get to choose which parameter is necessary. The parameter I want is the thickness for the X value. To link to it, we'll simply select the gray circle and turn it into a yellow circle. I'll pick OK and that parameter, and only that parameter, is referenced to the new part. Then I'll use the thickness command, select our surfaces, and then I'll reference the parameter from the parameters dropdown. Now I have a component that's adaptively linked to the master component through the surface and parametrically linked to the master component through the embedded parameter. As you can see, I've jumped ahead again. Our design is finished and ready to be placed in the vault. Before I place the design in the vault, I wanted to show you some of the features of this spreadsheet-driven design. If you look in the model browser, you'll see our master component. I've set that part to be invisible. I've also marked in the bill of material that this is a reference component. You'll see a number of parts that have an adaptive relationship to the master component. You'll also see several parts that do not maintain a relationship, like the content center information, the flanges, for instance, on the ends of the penetration. So now I'll add these files to the vault and prepare for the next step in our process. Now that I have the parts loaded into the vault, I'm ready to use the copy design process. I'm going to right click on the highest rated part in the assembly and use the copy design option. The first thing I want to do is specify where I want to store my new material. The next thing I want to do is identify the parts that need to be copied for the new design. I want to copy the assembly file that's already marked. I do not want to copy the content center information. But I do want to copy just about everything else for this practice. Here's the heater master part. Let's go ahead and mark that as a copied item. You'll notice that it actually changes wherever it's referenced. I'll take a second and go down and select the rest of the parts in our design. I'll go ahead and, and add a suffix to each of the new file names. Now I'm ready to start the copy design process. Simply select OK and let Vault do the copy design for me.